going on my MGTOW warriors? How y'all feeling? Hope everything is going well with y'all. You know, trying to deal with this uh, Me Too movement that's taking men out. They're like dead bodies, like laying all over the place, man. Men are just dying left and right, man, metaphorically and physically, man. Um, you got brothers that are literally killing themselves, you know, um, getting divorce rate, finding out that certain states in the United States, man, uh, have laws uh, for divorce. Um, where in which um, if you get divorced, you have to pay alimony until the woman dies. Basically, that means you get divorced five years later after the divorce has been finalized. She marries a whole new man or a whole new woman. And um, you still have to pay alimony. Yeah, you're 35 years old. 20 years from now after that, you're going to be 55 where I'm at right now. And you're still going to be paying her alimony. And she's on her third marriage. 85 years old, you're still paying alimony. She's on her fifth marriage. Or not. But you're still paying. Point. Check the state that you live in before you sign any marital contracts. This whole conversation, man, I wish I knew when I was, you know, growing up, man. I didn't have this information. I didn't know you know, what to do, bro. I really didn't, man. I didn't know about all these laws. You know, I didn't find out until I was in the fire getting burnt to freak up. So now that I got all of these wounds all over me and they starting to heal, what I'm trying to do as a brother in this movement, your boy MGTOW Monk, I'm trying to like help brothers, you know, so they don't have to make the same mistake. You know, there's other channels too, man, besides mine. Listen to them also. Check out bought my homeboy 313, Ram 313, you know, Coach Greg Adams and others, you know. Those are my favorites right there because those are the brothers that inspired me, Coach Greg Adams and uh, Black Ram 313. But um, the point is I'm trying to make, man, it's like, yo, brothers is dying, man. Yo, catch is dying out here. When you find out that you got to pay alimony, child support, you know, if you got a good job or you got a W-2, meaning that you work for the state, the city, or whatever. Um, yo, man, they taking 17.5% of your paycheck up front in New York. I don't know what the rest of the states are. I'm hearing certain states, like, I'm not sure about Florida or not, but they talking, like, no more 21 paying child support. They going all the way to 30 now. Yo, this is for them young, the young brothers out there, man, to listen to these to this video and other ones, man. Be careful, bros. Be careful, man. You know, these conversations that I be putting up, you know, MGTOW, Life Monk, my channel, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's not for women. These conversations is for men. This is a men's meeting. You know, I'm not popular yet, but I know as time moves on, I'm going to get popular. And then women are going to be coming to this channel hating me for informing brothers about what happened to me. You know, and it's like. You know, I can see them now. Oh, that's him. He, oh, look at his video. He's a punk. He's a pussy. Look at him. You no, know, no. They just mad because I'm exposing the truth. I'm telling, I'm warning you. They don't want me to warn you. They want you to stay right where you uninformed, un, no information, so they can, you know, do what they need to do to you when you don't do something they what they want. The bottom line is when your relationship goes into the shitter, it's because you didn't do something she wanted you to do bust this, right? When you get into a relationship with a woman, your whole entire relationship is based upon pleasing her and nothing else. You know why? Because she feels that she's giving you everything you've ever wanted, which was what is in between her legs. Because most women feel that's all you want anyway. You don't love me. You just love the torture and that's it. So once they feel that they've given you the torture, I don't have to do anything else for you. You owe me everything. Think about what I just said. Think about it for a second, bros. Yeah, man. That's how they see this. I gave you everything you want. You're a man. All you want is the cha-cha. That's it. Y'all are all evil. You don't love. You, 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 you're cheaters. This is how they see all of us, bros. Okay, so now when you get into a relationship, you understand why you try so hard to make it happen. You can never make it happy because she feels that she's giving you the world. That's what's in between her legs. 
Yeah. And a lot of times when you when you get into a relationship after about a year, you doing all the work in the bed. She's just laying there taking it and saying to you in her mind, it's your pleasure, not mine's. You know, but it's really not. It's her pleasure because you see how many times she done nutted, right? You see how much work you done put in while you, you know, you're doing the, the dirty deed. You dig, you know, how much sweat's coming off the top of your head? How much sweat's coming off the top of her head? Is she backing it up? Okay, she backed it up. How long did she back it up? Like what? 15 seconds, if that? And, and, and acting like that, like they did something. And then... Watch the times when they do back it up and they do go all in when it comes to the, you know, the lovemaking situation. There's always a motive behind it. It's never because I really like you. I really am turned on, you know, towards you. And I'm not talking about the first three months. I'm talking about a year into the relationship, two years into the relationship. That's what I'm talking about. You know, when they start you know, going in and like really giving it to you. It's a motive behind it. It's usually never because they're really digging you, bros. I'm talking about, like I said, be specific now, two years into the relationship is when this stuff starts happening. In the beginning, it's new. You still got your manhood with you. You still got your whatever attitude. Yeah, whatever, because you got three other chicks on the side. And she can tell that you got that whatever attitude. So now she's trying to do whatever she can to break that whatever attitude. Once that whatever attitude is done and is over with, that's when the BS starts. You dig? So um, I want to go into another conversation right now. Pause that. I want to go into this conversation. I got a good brother of mine who just came to me the other day. We was chopping it up for a second. And he told me that um, it's over for him and his, and his wife. You know, that's it. They, you know, they call and they quits. Just had a new baby and um, about a year old and it's over. So that's I said. I asked him, I said, well, why? Well, what's the deal? And he said, you know, he said because he cheated. And I said, okay, let's let's talk. I, I really couldn't get with him, you know, and tell him, talk to him where I really wanted to because he was at work and I was around. There was women around. So I said, I'm going to make a video and I'm going to give you everything that I got as far as my opinion on the situation. So here it goes. So I asked him, there's only two reasons why a man cheats. One, he just wanted some extra pussy. That's it. Simple. You know, I still love him. I just wanted, I just wanted to get that. That was it. Nothing else. That's one reason. And the other reason is because she's not doing something and it's, and you're not happy. So what I asked him was like, there's this thing in this book that I have by this guy named um, Dean Graciosi, you know, The Secrets of a Millionaire. And one of the things that he has in this book that talks about the seven whys, asking yourself the same question seven times. So why did you cheat? First thing come off the top of your head, you answer it and you keep on going. By the time you get to the sixth reason why you cheated, that's the truth. That's when you're really getting down to the truth on why you cheated. Now, when you get married, there's a contract that you sign and there's agreements that are made. If you break the agreements of any contract, the contract now is null and void because you broke the terms of the agreement. Okay? And it could be anything within the contract that you've signed, specifically marriage. Okay? If a person is not making you happy and they agree to do that, honor and obey me. You follow me? That's what it says when you get married in a Christian church. I don't know what religion you might be you dealing with, but when you get in a, married in a Christian church, it says to honor and obey. Now, if you just went down to City Hall, you're kind of screwed. It's like whatever the laws of the state that you live in say in that contract. Now, bottom line is, you know, I'm a spiritual religious person, right? Christian, Rastafarian, right? That's Haile Selassie is the return Christ. We're not going to go there, but that's the religion I deal with. I'm a Rastafarian. That being said, I got married in a Christian church, right? And it's and the pastor said to her, well, you honor or obey him. Now, the obey part don't come to me when it came to me. I just had to love her. That's it. And I did. But she got to honor and obey me. And that means... You got to obey. Now, if you don't obey, 
she she broke the contract. Now, when I was talking to the brother, he was telling me that when we got down to the third why or the fourth why, meaning like, well, why did you cheat? That's when we got to the real deal because she wasn't making him happy. He said he was trying to do, like we all do, bros, this for her, that for her, this for her, and it wasn't working. No matter what he did, she wasn't happy. And that's just the way that's the nature of a woman. There's nothing you can do to make them happy. I have a video on it, you know, about how you will always fail if you try to please a woman. Check my videos, you see it. It's a crazy video. And it actually is true because it happened to me. I did it. So anyway, I said to him, so tell me what happened. So he told me he was trying to do this for her, make her happy. She wanted him to do that, make her happy. He did it, and every time he turned around, he's not making her happy. And I just was shaking my head, SMH, when he was telling me that, right? So I told him, I said, well, bro, it's not your fault, man. Don't blame yourself. Because you, you know, because you went and went with another woman. When she did not please you is what she's supposed to do. She's supposed to make you happy, right? And she's not making you happy because you can't make her happy. So that's why you're unhappy. You were trying to live up to the contractual agreement by making her happy. But no matter what you did, you couldn't do it. Why? Because she wasn't living up to her part. And what was her part? To obey you. Yes, my brothers, to obey. That's the thing. We live in a society right now where that word obey is forbidden. Why marriages is failing? Why are the brothers, most brothers cheat? There's always a reason. Like I said, it's usually two. I'm a man. I got bros. And I know myself. It's because you ain't making me happy. So that is part of breaking the contractual agreement. There's something that she's not doing that's making you unhappy. And whatever that is... That's the reason why you stepped out. But I don't feel like the marriage was destroyed because you stepped out. It was already destroyed because of her actions. The contract was broken once you didn't do what you were supposed to do. So don't go making yourself feel bad because you stepped out. You didn't step out. The relationship was over once she didn't obey you and do what you was, she, was, she agreed to do. Now, again, if you went down to City Hall... You got to look at the divorce papers or the papers, uh, the, the, the actual laws when it comes to marriage and what it says there. But if you went to church, I don't care what the papers say. I know what I said to God because God is more powerful than any paper. You agreed to do this in front of God. You said you didn't do it. You broke the marriage marital agreement, and that's it. And then once you broke that marital agreement, it's over. Like if she cheated on you. Once he cheated on you, the contract's done. It's over. So if you go mess with the next woman, you absolve from what you might call it, uh, 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 adultery, because she's already broken the contract. Remember, this is a contract we're talking about here. I'm not talking about love. I'm not talking about heart. I'm, you know, and one thing about MGTOW, man, it gives you a different perspective now on how to deal with relationships, looking at it differently, not looking at it from a slave mentality, meaning like a blue pill mentality. We're using red pill. So... You know, the blue pill, the red pill, that all comes from the movie The Matrix. You know, when Morpheus stands there to the one, which is uh, Neo, and he asks him, which pill do you want? You could take this pill, everything remains the same. You go right back into The Matrix, like nothing happened. You take the red pill, you see how far the rabbit hole goes. Now, you notice that when you watch the movie, when he took the red pill, it wasn't all peaches and cream, bro. It was on that ship, the Nebuchadnezzar. Remember the food that they was eating, the clothes that they was they was wearing, the bed they had to lay in, but it was real. That's the whole thing. It wasn't make believe like the Matrix was make believe. So red pill, blue pill. This is what we're talking about. And I didn't even bust the analogy till I got into the MGTOW movement to understand what red pill means and what does blue pill blue pill mean. And it's all based upon. You know, the matrix. So that being said, we have to start looking at relationships between men and women differently now because the law has changed. The laws for, you know, men interacting with women are totally different from they was in the 20s and the 30s. We're on a whole different level now. So we can't look at this thing at the same way. So bottom line is look at the contract you signed. What was the agreement? Just like if you bought a car. Just like if you bought a, a preacher merchandise, whatever it is, what does the contract say? You follow me? And the bottom line is, if she's not making you happy, 
you know, and find out, you know, what is it that she's not doing? Did you try? Did you talk to her? And most of the time, brothers always tell me the same shit. They've they've talked to them. They reason with them. They told them what he's what they're not doing, and they try to fix it and do it because they don't want to get divorced. They want to stay with their woman, and no matter what they do, they keep on saying that you know it's never enough. It's never enough. So at that point, she broke the contract, bro, because she's not making you happy. You know, the onus is not it's not on the man. The onus is on the woman. It's on her to make you happy. Society in Western society has flipped it and make it look like it's our responsibility to make her happy. Well, anybody that's been married to a woman, that's been living with a woman, that's been with a woman, you all know that that cannot happen. So this is the reason why it's her job to make you happy. Now, I'm going to get a little biblical real quick. You know, and um, remember, this is a men's meeting we have in here. You know, Midtown Monk, you know, I'm, I'm spitting this for men. This ain't got nothing to do with women. If a woman listens to this video, I'm just going to tell you, yo, it's not for you. And you're going to hear stuff that it's going to burn you up. Because the conversation is not for you. It's for men. Y'all got your women's meetings, you've got your child support, you've got your custody, you've got your alimony. You talk about this as a men's world? Mm-hmm. Okay. Not from where I stand. I see this as, as a woman's world. So that being said, you know, when it comes to this relationship stuff, you know, um, getting married, man, and you understanding what the contract actually says and reading it before you sign any paperwork, man, understand what it is that you're agreeing to. And then once the um, individual breaks the agreement, the contract is now null and void. It is time to get a divorce and walk away. So don't make yourself feel bad if you went out there and you, you know, you had, you got with the next woman because the marriage was over once she broke the contract, once she stopped making you happy. So the biblical piece I was getting ready to hit you with is this. In the beginning, there was a man. This is from a Christian Judaic background named Adam. And he was living in this place where God placed them called the Garden of Eden. And the creator created them out of the dust of the earth. Now, the dust of the earth is the soil. To prove that fact, go get a blood checkup. What's in your blood? Iron, zinc, magnesium, copper, phosphate. Do a ge uh, geological analysis of soil. What's in the soil? The same things I just said. So that's proven that we definitely do come from the earth. Moving forward, the man was in the Garden of Eden. We don't know how long he was in this garden by himself. We have no idea. He could have been there for millennia. But then the Creator said, it is not right for man to be alone. So he put the man to sleep and he took his rib, DNA, and grafted a whole nother humanoid out of the man, which is called womb man. Why? Because she has a womb. Still a man, but it's a man that's got a womb. Now, they were in this garden together. We don't know how long they were in the garden together because it doesn't say. We can only speculate. In this garden, there was a tree that the Creator told. Adam first not to eat from. So he was there for millennia. He didn't eat from the tree. Created woman out of Adam, told both of them, do not eat from the tree. Now, even if you read the, if the book, you know, the book of Genesis, and where does it say, because I remember when somebody, a woman told me, where does it say that God told Eve not to eat it? And I was like, okay, let's be realistic. I'm not even going to look at the Bible. Think about what you just said. He's living there by himself. He knows that this woman was created for him because God told him. What do you think he did? You think he didn't tell her? Let's be honest. You think he didn't tell her about the tree? Come on. Moving forward. One day, you know, Eve goes over to the tree and there's a serpent there. Now this serpent, right, is not a serpent that's slithering on the ground. Because that was a curse that the creator gave to the serpent after he did what I'm getting ready to tell you to do. And I'm saying this for a specific reason. So now, Eve starts reasoning with the serpent, and, and, and she tells him, like, I can't eat from this tree. And then, and then the serpent tells him, no, you can eat from it. You'll be just as wise as God if you eat from this tree. It's good. You'll be just as wise as him. So now, the first sin, right, the first disobedience, right, in human history, human history was done by the woman. She was the first one to have her third eye open, not Adam. She had it open first. Now, once she ate from it, now she has the knowledge now of good and evil. She comes back to her man, Adam, 
with the apple, right? He don't have the knowledge of good and evil. She does. She's got more wisdom than Adam. So she tells Adam, you know, to eat the apple. Now, well, not tells tell him tell him tell him to bring it, eat it. She just brings it back. Now you gotta use your mind, like you know, it because it doesn't say, you know, a conversation took place that she came back with it. He ate it too. But think about it. What kind of a conversation must have took place when she came back? I mean, yo, sis, what are you doing with this apple? You know, I told you, God said we ain't supposed to eat that. You know. Now, mind you, she has wisdom. He don't. There is nothing, he, he he doesn't have any defense mechanisms, you know, mentally to deal with her because she's got the wisdom. He don't. Where am I going with this? He shouldn't eat the apple pear because God told him not to, but because of her wisdom. Just the way the snake beguiled Eve, Eve she beguiled Adam. You follow me? The first sin of the human species was done by Eve, the woman. That's why women have to be, you know, ruled over by men. Because look at what happens when you don't. I'm going to get to that in a, in a quick point. So to seal that conversation up, the point I'm trying to make is that they both was cursed and the serpent. The serpent was cursed, the slither on his belly, and the dust of the earth shall be in your mouth for the rest of your days. Read the Bible. It'll tell you that. About him being cursed to be slithering on his stomach. Now, that must have been a humanoid or a type of oid creature because he was standing upright first. The curse was him to put, for, the, for the serpent to slither on his belly and the dust of the earth to go in his mouth. That's what it says, the dust of the earth, right? Read it for yourself. Old English Bible. No new translations. No new modern English translations. Read it in the old English language. Art thou thrust? You know, like Shakespearean, read it that one because that's where this is. This is where you get the original, you know, uh, tongue in terms of it being translated from Chaldean or from, you know, uh, whatever Hebrew is the is, is the most truest English translation if you're going to deal with English. I don't speak any other English language but English, so that's the book I'm, I'm I'm suggesting you to read from. So now the next curse was that man, you know, t cursed uh, cursed Eve. That she's going to bring forth children in great travail. She's going to go through pain, misery, and suffering. Menstrual cycles. You're going to go through pain. You might even lose your life on the table. And that was the curse to woman for what she did. Right? The curse for man was that you're not going to be able to just pick stuff off the trees. Food, Food's not just going to be there for you anymore. You're going to have to labor for your food. You're going to have to labor for your life. You're going to have to work hard. You know, you're going to have to dig the potatoes out the ground. You're going to have to toil the land. You know, to eat and to, and to live and survive. It's not going to be peace anymore. So there were three judgments that were passed out. One to the serpent, one to Eve, and one to Adam. My point is by bringing all of this stuff up is that we got to understand that this is the roles in, in, that men play and the roles that women play. Woman came out of man, and you're supposed to be there, you know, for my pleasure, not for your pleasure, for my pleasure. He, the creator, made her for him because the creator said that he felt that Adam was alone. So he created a help meet, M-E-E-T. That's what it says for Adam. So now me pleasing, you pleasing the woman, that's not your role. That's not your role. Her role is to please you. Now that being said, brothers, you got to over, you got to overstand, as they say in the Rastafari language, not under, because you ain't got it yet. You got to be on top of it overstand right with great responsibility you know these things come with great responsibilities you know you know the spider-man thing about with great power comes great responsibility that's great power and you have to be responsible with this power you can't abuse your woman because if she's going to subjugate herself to you you can't abuse her you know what i'm saying you have to use you know your you know god's wise mind and pray and ask him to help you you know with your feelings and emotions you can't you know, because that's when, you know, resentment and, and, and enmity starts, you know, and she'll hate you for it. Because if you come home from a hard day's work and she's supposed to, you know, serve you and honor you and obey you, and you just start screaming at her for no reason, just because now you're causing a problem. Not only that, you're causing a problem for the next man. Because if that relationship breaks over, now she's angry and the next man can't come into the relationship with her freely and openly. So there's a responsibility on all of us men that when you get that woman that's honoring and obeying you, you do not 
abuse your privileges that was given to you by the creator. It is a privilege to have a good woman. But you see how the roles is mixed up? You got men abusing that privilege. That's making women mad. That's making it difficult for the next man. So you got to really stay in the oneness with the creator, right? And try to ask him for, for guidance so that when you get up in your feelings about whatever, the money didn't come right, you're just not feeling good, you just can't smack her in the face just because, because that's abuse. But the point I'm trying to make is that in your heart, you know when you're doing something wrong. You know, most people do, bro. And I don't, I can't go for when you say, uh, people say, I didn't know. Yes, you do. You know right from wrong because you know you wouldn't want somebody doing that to you. So then don't do it to somebody else. It's a simple thing. So I'm going to wrap this up by saying if the marriage broke up because she wasn't making you happy, then she broke the marriage vows and the marriage is over. The marriage is not over only because somebody cheated. There's other reasons why the marriage can be over. Adultery is not the only reason why a marriage ends. It is not the final straw. The final straw is when you are not, one of the persons is not doing what they're supposed to be doing for the other one. You know, you're not bringing the check home, bro. She's not working. She's relying on you to bring the money home. And you out there spending it on the next chick. Now, why are you spending it on the next chick? Because she's not doing something that's making you happy? Then you need to end the relationship, bro, and not keep her anymore. And then move on. Because you're going to cause a problem for the next dude. Because she's going to get angry. And then now she's going to take that crap out on the next dude. If she's not making you happy, then leave. Do not stay there. You follow me? If you got that next chick on the side, yo, and, 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 and that's it, then call it off, bro. Don't keep that sucker in hiding. Call it off. Move on. But if you try to keep it in secret and say, well, she's not making you happy. I'm just going to mess with Tamika, you know, on the side, and I'm going to keep my wife. No, you're causing a problem for all of us. Me too. You're causing a problem for me because I'm single. I don't know. I go out there and meet the next chick. You know, I'm meeting a representative. Then all of a sudden, the real person comes out a year later, and that real person is an angry person because of what you did. So we all have responsibilities in this thing. She got her responsibilities, and bros, we got our responsibilities too. She ain't making you happy, end it and move on. Man up and end that damn thing. And don't be like, I want her and I want this. Because you didn't act. That's not, was, was that the agreement out the gate? Was that the agreement? When you signed the contract and she agreed that you could have Tamika and, and, and Shwaniqua on the side, if that wasn't the agreement in the beginning, bro, you can't come in and change the terms of the contract two years into the relationship. Now it's that's on you now because you're changing the terms of the contract and you're causing the problem. And now I don't have no sympathy for you. But if you're just in there straight up and you've been 100 on the table and then she's not living up to her responsibility, then she destroyed the marriage and it's over. Now walk away and leave. So that's just a little bit of something to try to motivate and help others that, you know, if this is what happened to you, don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself. Don't start looking at it like, oh, man, I cheated. No, 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 no. You, it was over before you did that. It was over because she didn't do what she was supposed to do to make you happy. And you tried to make her happy. And look at the things that you did. If you did all of these things and she's still saying you suck, right? Then that means she's not happy with you. And the marriage is over. So at that point, get the divorce papers set and move on. So if you did you did have another woman, yo, yo you didn't commit adultery because the marriage contract was already over because she wasn't making you happy. Yo, this is Midtown Monk with this little video. Hope it helps the next man just trying to uplift brothers and give some information so that, you know, there's no more dead bodies laying around, man. I don't want to see another man Black, white, Chinese, I don't give a damn what race you from, because it's hitting all of us. I don't want to see another man wiped out, committing suicide because they don't have this information of the MGTOW movement. This is MGTOW Monk, and I'm out. One love. Stay up, brothers.